10 pieces of armor or equipment that appeared in WoW's game files at one point or another, but were never made available to players for whatever reason. To start off, we've got Alex's Ring of Audacity. This GM-only item has been in the game file since vanilla WoW, and had an interesting effect. For one, the item is artifact level quality, a quality only ever given to GM items before artifacts were added to the game in Legion, and its original effect gave plus 1000 to defense. Defense was an old stat that would boost your chance to dodge, parry, and be missed by melee attacks by a certain amount. This ring was not unique equip, so it was possible to wear two at once. If anyone were to wear two of these rings at once, you'd essentially be unhittable by melee attacks. There was some speculation that two of these rings were worn for testing purposes against bosses, to see if debuffs and spells were working as intended without having to worry about melee attacks. That explanation seems like a likely explanation to me, seeing as how it was around since vanilla times and Blizzard had all kinds of weird items in the game files that seemed to serve no purpose other than to test stuff internally. The ring was also a reference to Alex, the creative director for World of Warcraft. Alex was once the leader of a famous guild in EverQuest, and his first character was the first level 50 character in the game. His guild also went on to acquire many world first achievements in EverQuest. And when he transitioned over to WoW, he was asked to not get the world first kill in Onyxia because then people might accuse him of having inside knowledge since he worked for Blizzard. The original text on the ring reads, Consider yourself born again. Hardcore. I don't really get what it's a reference to, but Alex was a hardcore player, so it could be a reference to one of the many things he accomplished. When the defense stat was removed from the game, the ring was changed as well to have no stats. And its flavor text was changed as well to looks great, less filling. Blizzard has a habit of changing or adding flavor text to items not put into the game. Next up, Onyxia Scale Breastplate. This item suggests that there was probably more things planned with the vanilla item Scale of Onyxia, since it also has a pattern in the game files that require 12 of them as part of the mats to make the breastplate. But the pattern was never put into the game either, seeing as the armor wasn't. The scale of Onyxia was eventually only used to create one item, a cloak that was almost required by tanks to wear since it negated the damage of a very hard hitting dot in Blackwing Lair. There were also two different versions of the scale of Onyxia in the game files, the refined scale of Onyxia and charged scale of Onyxia, further indicating that Blizzard had all kinds of plans for the scale of Onyxia and just abandoned them all halfway through but not before programming some of them into the game. So this next item is a shirt with an interesting effect. The item is called War Paint Shirt, not good for ladies, and why I. When worn by a male character, it gives them tattoos on their chest, back, and arms, which is a pretty neat idea for a shirt. But when worn by female characters, the tattoos go over the bra, which doesn't look very natural. I guess that's why it says not good for ladies in its item date. Currently, I think the only way to get tattoos is to play a demon hunter. So shirts that give tattoos seem like a neat idea that Blizzard was playing around with. This next item is another shirt called Super Girly Shirt, which is just a cut up striped t-shirt that shows the midriff. There are way more risque pieces of armor in the game than this shirt, so it's kind of a mystery why it was never added. It does look very similar to the shirt that female goblin survivors wear in the goblin starting zone. So maybe it's just an NPC on the item. Next up we've got the Game Master Armor, specifically three pieces of gear. The GM hood, robe, and slippers. When GMs used to interact with players in game, they could be seen wearing these items. But GMs could pretty much wear whatever they wanted, so I assume the GM armor was just a default armor set given to GM characters and they were free to modify them however they wanted later. So the GM armor was technically in the game, but never made available to non-GM characters, for obvious reasons. The next item in this video is a ring called Ring of Uber Resist, Test. Now this item is very obviously a test item, seen as it says test in its name. The item is also artifact quality like a lot of other test items and it just has plus 315 to all resistances, the highest amount on any single piece of gear. But there have been temporary effects that could give you higher resistances, like the trinket from Tolbarad. 
What's interesting about this item is that when resistances were removed from the game in Mist, this item remained unchanged, along with a handful of vanilla items. Blizzard is not shy about changing stats on test items, so it seems Blizzard doesn't really use this item anymore, or they still use it to test certain things. Since while resistances were removed from almost all items and abilities, they still are in the game and still work. So I guess it's not fair to say Blizzard removed resistances completely in Mist, and rather Blizzard just removed like 90% of the things related to resistances, and made it a rare thing, and an inconsequential thing. Alright, and for the next four items in this video, they don't really have too much story behind why they were never implemented like the other items on this list, so I'll just showcase them all real quick and end off the video. The Mage Dragon Robe. A cloth robe that gave strength never added for unknown reasons. It's speculated that maybe it was a reward from the old Tremors of the Earth, or Broken Alliances quest, which required you to fight black dragons and was turned into the Kirin Tor. But there's no real proof of that. It's just one of the few quests that had both mages and dragons in it back in vanilla. Burning Obsidian Band, an uncommon quality level 50 ring that gave stamina, but strangely has no sell price. Mainly only holiday items or special event items don't have sell prices, so it could have probably been set to be part of an event of some sort. Scorched Bands Cloth bracers with nothing special of note. They are green bracers with the same model as two other obtainable bracers in the game, and have normal stats for an item of its level. And finally, Pirate's Patch Test. This item is a black eye patch, with the same model as three other eye patches that can be obtained in game. Since it does have test in its name, it's obviously just a test item. But testing for what? To see what characters look like with an eye patch? That's the only thing I can think of, or maybe it's an item they use for NPCs with eye patches or something. What's interesting to note about this item is that it uses a shield for its item icon, so maybe it's supposed to shield your eye or something.